What do you want to do when you become, when you grow up? That's the favorite question adults like asking children. My mom used to make the best chapatis and the best mandazis. And she would give us some to take to my aunt. And she stayed about 20 minutes walking from where we used to stay. And I loved going to her place because she would make tea and it had extra milk and more sugar. And then, of course, she would ask, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I'd say, I want to be a doctor. My aunt was very passion is very passionate about HIV and she would bring brochures on HIV back home to my place. And by seven, eight, I already knew the ABC of HIV. And retrospectively, I think that influenced my, <clears throat> my interest in medicine. So time went by, and I was in, as in, time went by, and there's a time I was in boarding school. I was in, I think, grade seven, and I got sick and she had to come fetch me to, to bring me to the hospital. And the following morning, um, we, you take a shuttle. She, the hospital was about 20 minutes from where she stayed. And you take a shuttle, it's ideally 14, a 14 seater shuttle, but in Kenya, that the minimum would be, back then, the minimum would be 23 people, including the driver. And this was back then around 2001, 2002, and people didn't have phones. And so there are young men who call out, they call you out, please come board this one, it's about to leave, it will not stop, you will get to work on time. And they would call out, they would say, counselor, come get into this one. So we would, my aunt would go and look into whichever was almost full and would get in. And it would be very full. <clears throat> Nobody's on the phone. And my aunt would start talking about HIV, <laughs> about the ABC of HIV. And my aunt does not have any filters. She, will, <laughs> she would describe how when it comes to abstinence, being faithful, condom use, she would explain it. And by any chance, if the, uh, the radio was playing a song, and they should pick a line out of it and go with it. So we got, we got to the hospital, I got checked. And coming back, she went and picked condoms and put in her bag. And I'm looking at her and I'm thinking, wow. <laughs> so we got back into, we, so back, we, it's the same trip back home. And she was still talking about HIV. And when we alighted, the young men who call you to get into the, the vehicle, she would dish out the condoms. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow, this is interesting. And I'm there, and I'm, I was so small back then. And we would walk home. And she said, she'd say, Brenda, I am telling them about HIV. I have to give them the condoms, because otherwise they will engage in unsafe sex. Or, at the very least, they will use polythenes. And we have these condoms at work, so I'll give them. And she took me back to school. And one of my classmates saw me and said, Wow, so after she had left, she said, oh, Brenda, you know anti-AIDS? <laughs> I'm thinking, what? <laughs> and she said, that's our aunt. I'm thinking, yeah, she's my aunt too. <laughs> I didn't know that part. And she said, we call her anti-AIDS because she talks about HIV a lot. So anti, anti for aunt, well, it's, it fits. <laughs> So the other best day of my life was when I got admission into medical school. And I called her and I said, I have this admission into Kenyatta University. I'm going to practice medicine, finally. 
And she said, congratulations, I'll support you. But you know, you, should have gone, you could have gone to more university because then you would have gone to Indiana University for the exchange, you would have met Prof. Mamlin. You know, the drugs that for HIV that we have, he's the one who brings them. <laughs> well, I, I was disappointed for a week, but we dove into medicine and we were busy figuring out the popliteal fossa, the roof, the floor, and she would call every week to check on me. So she would say, have you gone to church? I'm from church. I'd say, yes. Is it raining? Doesn't rain much in Ruiru. I'd tell her no. Then she would say, you know you missed your chance to go to my university. <laughs> you have to figure out a way. I don't know what you're going to do, but you missed a chance. <laughs> well, it's too late for me. So I finished, I graduated, started internship and she still called. She said, congratulations, now you have to treat people. It's important. But you missed your chance. <laughs> okay. It is what it is. <laughs> then I joined more university, finally, for pediatric residency. <clears throat> it was time for exchange. And the program had stalled for a while. And I remember asking one of my mentors, he's a nephrologist, I told him, I want to see big, crazy things in medicine, things we don't do here in MTRH and do fairly much. And there was no chance. So he said, maybe you try India. I could not afford it. My aunt still called and she would say, well, you missed your chance. You are going to have to figure out how to get to America. Because, well, she didn't know. I don't think she remembered that I was in Moy University then. <laughs> and so the pediatrics program doesn't have the exchange. I will have to find a place. So clearly this was not for me. Then our head of department, Dr. Myra Koech, calls and says, Brenda, where would, you, where would you want to go for electives? I told her, I want to see big things, crazy things in medicine. So, and I know we don't have the chance to go to the US, so I don't know. I'm thinking India or just Kenyatta, <laughs> Kenyatta Hospital. Then a few weeks down the line, she called and said, well, you were chosen to go to Kenyatta, to Indiana. So I'm thinking, yay. Finally. <laughs> so I thought, should I call my aunt? <laughs> I thought, no way. What is bigger? A photo in Indiana. <laughs> and I env envisioned, you know, a gate written Indiana University, and I was planning to stand right there and have someone take a photo with it. Unfortunately, they have, we have mobile phones in 2023. And before I landed, my people already called her and told her, <laughs> Brenda is going to Indiana. So I landed, and a few days down the line, I didn't find someone to take a photo, and I didn't find the big gate with Indiana University. We had not come to this side of town where there's the, there's the wall written IUPY. But either way, so my aunt texts, oh, you need to, you need to contact Prof. Mamlin. This is his number. <laughs> Tell him it's Irene Kalamai from Mosoriot. And I'm thinking, how do I start that? <laughs> we will meet. Fortunately, the first day we met uh, with Debbie at the Global Health Office, and she, uh, she said, you're going to have an ice cream social, you're going to meet Prof. Mamlin and the other amazing people. And we met, and I took a photo, and I sent to her, the, well, that was the second photo. And that is my journey of coming to America. <laughs> Thank you.
did you catch the name of her aunt? Irene Calamai. We both share love for Irene Calamai. I want you to remember that name. Irene, I call the mother of Ampath. When I started the first clinic in that little village, she was a matron at that little health center. She created an environment of innovation and openness. There are three programs we started there each of which grew to be the largest programs in the world. And even to this day, they stand as the largest in the world. If you'd like to know the details of those programs, you have to bid in the silent auction. <laughs> One of the offerings is an opportunity to go out and have dinner with Sarah Lynn and me. And we promise to pick up the tab, and the topic will be Irene Calamai. So if you want to know why Irene is the mother of Ampath, don't forget to bid. Thank you. Thank you.